Good afternoon, everybody. I am one of the members of the Collaboration, Risk Evaluation, and Surveillance Team, also known as CREST, within the Office of Study Integrity and Surveillance, also known as OSIS, within CEDAR. Today, I'll be giving you an overview of the CREST Site Selection Model. My talk's learning objectives are to describe the role of CREST within the Office of Study Integrity and Surveillance, or OSIS, to list the types of studies assessed by CREST, to evaluate the risk factors CREST uses for selecting sites for inspection, to examine some of TEAM's recent metrics, and lastly, to identify some of the challenges and opportunities CREST faces in its day-to-day -day work. CREST has been tasked with conducting risk-based assessments of BE studies sites by briefly verifying accuracy of site information, evaluating site inspection history, assessing sites in the context of study conduct and complexity. Following these assessments, SCREST recommends sites to say yes or no for inspection. Our work is done in collaboration with OSIS leadership, OSIS office director, deputy office director, division directors, deputy division directors, and team leaders as well as OSIS reviewers, project management staff, and the primary review divisions within the Office of Generic Drugs and the Office of New Drugs. CREST assesses many studies submitted to the agency in support of applications. Most of the studies we assess are in vivo BE studies, but we also assess clinical endpoint studies, pharmacodynamic studies, such as vasoconstriction studies, in vitro BE studies, pharmacokinetic safety tolerability studies, and immunogenicity safety and efficacy studies. Now we'll move on to the risk-based assessments. We look at a number of factors when evaluating a study site or submission. These can include the site's inspection history, whether previous inspections have been classified as no action indicated, voluntary action indicated, etc. Whether the site is a new site with no inspection history, the date and outcome of the previous inspection, the conduct dates of the previously inspected studies, the complexity of the studies, any unique aspects of the study conduct like a unique type of assay. And we may also look at factors identified in a four cause request, request or information received from other regulatory bodies. When we are assessing a study site, we may ask ourselves some of the following questions. Do we need to clarify any discrepancies in the site address? We don't want to send anyone to a closed site or one that doesn't exist or the wrong site. Has there been a change in management? Are there known adverse events associated with the drug? Are there previously inspected studies relevant to the current studies? For example, when evaluating a clinical endpoint study, we may not be able to rely on inspection history for in vitro studies. Were there an unusually high number of discontinued subjects? For analytical sites, were there a lot of repeat analyses? Do we know of any issues with the analyte? The last few slides contained a few examples of what we consider during an assessment. Overall, there are over 30 factors that we apply to both clinical and analytical sites. Generally, risk assessments are qualitative in nature, and we are looking to incorporate a quantitative approach. OSIS and CREST evaluate the risk factors used on a regular basis, and we assess every submission, every pivotal study, and every relevant site, which means we have a lot of work. And now we move on to look at some of the workload we've handled recently. In calendar year 2019, CREST assessed over 1,200 submissions, including ANDA submissions and NDA, BLA, IND, and clinical endpoint ANDA submissions. In total, we assessed over 2,300 sites. As we handle this workload, we are also faced with a few challenges and opportunities. 
we need to we need to manage and maintain the accuracy of information of a large international site inventory. We need to provide comprehensive risk-based site assessments taking into consideration a multitude of factors. We, we need to work efficiently in order to provide timely assessments to ensure user fee timelines are met. And with that, we will move on to a few challenge questions to test your knowledge on what I've discussed. Question number one, who is responsible for providing a risk-based recommendation to inspect the site that conducts in vivo BE studies? A, project management team, PMT. B, the collaboration, risk evaluation, and surveillance team, CREST. Integrity services, or D, OSIS division directors. The answer is B, the Collaboration, Risk Evaluation, and Surveillance Team, CREST. Question number two, what is not a consideration when assessing a site? A, the date of the site's last inspection. B, the outcome of the site's last inspection. C, the site's annual revenue. D, the conduct dates of the previously inspected studies. The answer is C, the site's annual revenue. In summary, today we've described CREST's role within the Office of Study Integrity and Surveillance, or OSIS. We've listed the types of studies CREST assesses. We've evaluated some of the risk factors used in CREST's site selection model. We've examined some of CREST's accomplishments in the last year and we've identified a few of the challenges CREST faces in its daily work. If you have any questions, please submit them to the moderators and we will try to address some of them during the Q&A session. Thank you very much for your attention.